good evening and welcome to the day 2 of design histories of modern and contemporary india a symposium series organized by tapati guha thakur to and imami art the series runs through february to march we started yesterday with professor ashok chatterjee's scintillating lecture and today we have with us professor pinaki de and professor tapati guha thakur to will be moderating and briefly introduce her tapati guha thakur to is honorary professor of history and the former director of the center for studies in social sciences calcutta from 2012 to 2017 she has written widely on the art and cultural history of modern india and has held several visiting fellowships abroad we will put her bio in the chat box where you can read more about it a few housekeeping rules uh the audience can type in their questions in the chat box or the question answer box and i will take the questions at the end of the session i am also thankful to our outreach partner cbmrc kolkata and nid amdavad professor tapati guha thakurta will now take the floor and introduce professor pinaki de thank you can i be heard yes yeah okay thank you ushmita for um introducing me and uh starting off the second session as i think many people joining us today would have been part of yesterday's session too but there could well be many who are joining for particular sessions so just to briefly set the stage for pinaki to take over uh, we were discussing yesterday design in some of its broadest connotations and uses and functions and it was a very very important uh, laying out of a cartography if you could think of uh, a mapping of time and space for thinking about how design as a site of pedagogy practice profession and a particular discourse emerges over the 20th century now in the sessions that will follow and we will be beginning today we will often be looking at much more specific uh, genres of design uh specific centers and individual personalities so i think uh, with pinaki's talk we'll be bringing a different genre that of book and graphic design book cover design a uh, noteur who is very well known the world over for his films but he will be introduced here in his i would not even say prior but in his parallel life as a graphic artist or what in those days were called commercial artist as an illustrator a book cover designer font designer and we will be looking at a site and the site will be different it will be largely calcutta though with connotations that certainly are important so i'll not anticipate pinaki's lecture further but just to lay out a context for thinking about this and i'll come back again uh it's my great pleasure to introduce um a young scholar and an extremely talented book designer into our conversation today so pinaki de as his bio note says actually juggles two very different professional identities uh he is trained to be a teacher of english uh and he works full time as he says has a day job as an associate professor of english at raja pihari mohan college uttar pradesh which means the rest of his time of course <laughs> weekends night and everything else goes into what is his passion which is that without formal training in any of the design schools art schools or design schools pinaki's emerged as a very important cover designer and graphic illustrator over the last decade and more so among his many 
uh, kind of accolades now. He's a winner of the Publishing Next Prize for the best book cover design in India twice in 2017 and 2019. His book cover for the novel Calcutta by Kunal Basu won the prestigious Oxford Bookstore Prize for the best cover design in India at the Jaipur Lit Fest of 2017. He's also the designer of several important books in the Shwetvajit Rai canon, the Pothir Pachali sketchbook, HarperCollins 2016, Travels with the Alien, HarperCollins 2018, and The Three Rays, which is on Upendra Kishore, Shukumar Rai, and Shwetvajit Rai, which is, came out only last year from Pek. Pinaki has also been playing a very important role as a member of the Rays Society. Uh, we know that this is the centenary year of Shatujit Rai, and there have been many, many projects afloat uh, for commemorating him on this centenary year. But the Ray Society is, of course, much older. Uh, its full name is the Society for the Preservation of Shatujit Rai Archives. And it is housed in the very home in which Shatujit Rai lived and worked. And uh, it is directly under his son, Shundip Rai. But Pinaki, in many ways, has become the young, the dynamic, and the public face of this archive. He's the go-to person, usually, for things you need. And he's really an archive of information on anything to do with the Shatujit Rai archives. I welcome him today to talk about a particular aspect of Shatujit Rai's enormous talents in the field. Over to you, Pinaki. Yeah. Thank you, Topotiti. Can I be heard, first of all? I mean, yes, you can. You can be heard. Uh, first of all, uh, it's a great pleasure, you know. Um, as I have always said, you know, I absolutely admire and adore Topotiti's work. And also, you know, so when to be invited by her to speak on, you know, uh, Ray is, of course, really flattering. Now, of course, you know, first of all, I, I do work in uh, Shwetta Chitre archive uh, and uh, I get a lot of help from uh, Shwandeep Rai. And I must say that a lot of his work, uh, you know, is still uh, not out in public domain. It is still there. And when I say a lot, it's really a lot. So, so it seems inexhaustible that, you know, that it is still there. So today, what I'm trying to do is I will talk about uh, Ray's formative years. Uh, I will talk about uh, Ray's career as a book cover designer. Remember, uh, he was, uh, remember, he, he had this uh, art education, which was truncated a bit, and he joined an advertising agency. But uh, he also had this amazing job uh, uh, elsewhere. I will actually speak about all these things in detail. and. Uh, I will also try to look at the kind of influences Ray had, you know, while doing cover design. And not only that, you know, I will also talk about Ray's negotiation with modernity and the way he looked at modernity uh, in his own way. is almost shaping it uh, uh, in his, through his own lens. But remember, this lecture is not only about Ray, you know, and this is something I always insist. This is also about a host of other talented people who are absolutely lost, you know, in oblivion. I really don't know whether we'll be e ever able to do justice to the kind of work that Osi Ganguly and Onno Damunshi and Makon Gupta and Kanu Goshu, all these people who worked with me, you know, during that time did. And so, you know, what I'll try to do is I will also try to look at the ecosystem, you know, the entire ecosystem where we worked. So what I'll do is, of course, it's a very visual, which, you know, kind of presentation. So what I try to do is I'll just share my uh, PDF or PPT, whatever I do, and I'll start my lecture, you know, proper. But before I do that, I must also acknowledge some people here because they are crucial, because since it's archival materials, I'm absolutely indebted to Shondip Rai because he actually gave permission uh, to reproduce a lot of things here. To Riddhi Ghoshami, also a member of the Shwetvajit Rai archives and a very, very good, uh, you know, archiver. Uh, Devashis Dev, the illustrator who wrote a wonderful book, Bengali, in Bengali, about Shwetvajit Rai's design. Pronobesh Mighty, a collector who is 
normally not known outside Bengal, but probably a veritable treasure trove of, you know, designs, okay? And also, you know, some stuff from Ananda Bajar Putrika. So, and you know, this is a kind of a disclaimer before I begin, because I'll be using a lot of their photographs from the archives and other places. And so, you know, let me begin first. And, you know, without much ado, I'll just jump into the lecture. And, uh, you know, I'll try to make to, to justice to, you know, the huge talent that Ray is. You know, uh, one of the problems is, of course, when you start about Ray, you never know when to you know, stop. So I'll just keep my stopwatch here and I'll try to be, you know, uh, equitable with time. But please, you know, warn me if I've overstepped oh, the point. I mean, for the only reason that we should have time for a very rich discussion like we did yesterday. <laughs> I think that's also part of it that once you're bringing so much material out in there, right. I think it, much you know, that will leave us room, but oh. please, you can set your stopwatch, so that's fine. Okay. Oh, should we share your screen now? I, I will share my screen, and so I just started. Um, um, so first of all, can my uh, screen be seen? Yes. Wonderful. Okay, um, so, you know, um, first of all, when I talk about Shotojit Roy, you know, the problem that a lot of, uh, you know, that we have about Ray is, of course, the construction of his formative years, you know, kind of a timeline for his formative years. So even before I begin the lecture, let me, you know, in nutshell, talk about certain aspects of his life, which will actually help us in, in a way, kind of retracing the past as he goes through it. So what I have done is I have uh, created a basic timeline, you know, which will be extremely important. Uh, uh, okay. uh, Penaki, can you make it full screen, if you don't mind, please? Uh, is it not full screen? Uh, uh, you have... Not it yet. Not, it's not full screen? No. Okay, just let me see if the PPT will be, so... Is this better? Yes. Yes. Is this full screen now? It's uh, all false, but you can actually go to begin slideshow and first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll just go for this slideshow. Uh, so is this full screen now? Hello? Yes, yes, it is full screen. Wonderful, thank you. wonderful. And thank you so much. And uh, so what I'll do first, of course, is to create a kind of a timeline for Gray, you know, and because it's important, because uh, for the uninitiated, especially, because a lot of us really don't know exactly the timeline. And it's important for a lot of other reasons, which I will state, you know, one by one. So first of all, after graduating in economics uh, from presidency, you know, uh, Gray wanted to study commercial art. Now, the problem is, uh, uh, his mother insisted that, you know, he should go to Shantiniketan, to Kala Bhavan, uh, of course, because uh, you have a Tagore there and you have, of course, Kala Bhavan is, uh, you know, the, the great teacher, Master Moshe, as is known, Nandulal Bose is there. So uh, Ray's mother really wanted Ray, you know, to travel to Kala Bhavan and have a kind of a formal uh, education there, uh, art education there. The problem is Kala Bhavan doesn't have commercial art as a kind of an option. So Ray had no other way but to study fine arts. It's a kind of a four-year course during that time. And you had wonderful teachers there, of course, Binod, Binod Bihari Mukhopadhyay was there, and of course, uh, Nondulal Bose. And Ramkinkar Bhai was also working during that time. So in 1940, you know, Ray actually came to Kala Bhavan in Shantiniketan as a student of fine arts. And there, you know, one of the first uh, impressions of Shantiniketan was uh, a kind of a mural he saw in the student's hostel there. It's actually done by Binod Bihari. And there's a beautiful kind of description of the mural uh, by Ray himself in one of his memoirs. I'll just read it, read it a bit because it will give a kind of an idea of what Ray was encountering in Shantiniketan that he didn't do before. So this is raised quotes. Uh, the entire ceiling was a painting showing a genteel village scene uh, in glowing colors, full of trees, fields, ponds, people, birds, and beasts. A village in Birvum, 
One could call it a tapestry or an encyclopedia. Such painting did not seem to bear any relation to Oriental art as I knew it. So, you know, this first encounter with Binod Bihari's mural is a kind of an eye opener for Ray in Shantiniketan. Uh, so Ray is actually getting acquainted with the nuances of, uh, you know, Eastern art, mostly in Shantiniketan. You know, for Western art, he already had a kind of an idea, picking up things from magazines uh, here and there from Calcutta. And there were discussions around his friend circles regarding Western art. But regarding Eastern art, he didn't have that kind of conception. So I think it is in Shantiniketan that he's building that. Otherwise, his life in Shantiniketan was not that great. Remember, you know, Ray was an urban guy and uh, frankly, he was a bit lost. But he made three very important friends uh, in Shantiniketan and they lasted his lifetime, frankly. Uh, one is, of course, uh, Prithish Anyogi, who later became an art historian in his own right. Dinkar Koshik, who later became the principal of Kuala Bhavan, frankly, and also Namutu Swami, also, you know, uh, who, who also uh, you know, did very well later on. And with these three people, and there was one teacher whose name is Alex Adamson, who was an English teacher. Uh, he used to discuss music. And with these three, you know, friends he used to discuss uh, things about Western art, Eastern art, about the ways, you know, art world is moving and the kind of movements that is taking place across the world. So uh, Ray could, one of the problems that Ray faced in Shantiniketan that he didn't like the fine arts schools that much, or he said that he was not well prepared for that. He was not good in fine arts. And that is his own evaluation. And he itched to come back to Calcutta. So when in uh, December, 1942, uh, you know, there was possibility of Japanese bombing uh, the, the Cal bombing Calcutta, they actually came, he came back to Calcutta, never to go back to Shantiniketan. One event that happened in Shantiniketan that almost defined uh, the uh, defined rape as a person, uh, the visit to, you know, Ajanta, Ilora, Elephanta, Sanchi, and Khajuraho, you know, in, in phases, of course. And that also, you know, taught him a lot about the way, you know, Eastern art can, you know, can, can play a major social role and kind of an aesthetic role in shaping a person. Now, when he came back uh, from Shantiniketan, he actually never finished the course. So he actually stayed there for two and a half years. The course was unfinished and he was back in Calcutta. And in Calcutta, through a kind of a family acquaintance, I can tell you the name if it matters, Lolit Mitro, uh, whom he actually mentions, he gets acquainted with uh, Dilip Kumar Gupto. Now this name will be very, very important, uh, not only for Ray, but for I think uh, design history uh, in India. Uh, Dilip Kumar Gupto was an assistant manager at DJ Kimo, uh, an advertising agency in Calcutta. And Ray joined DJ Kimo as a junior visualizer. Uh, it is a coincidence that on the same day, you know, Osi Ganguly also joined. In fact, Osi Ganguly in one of the interviews talks about Manik joining the Manik, which is uh, Shottojit Rai's nickname, joining uh, DJ Kimo the same day as him at the, on the same salary, okay, in the same post. And they had tables opposite to each other. So here you have the future of Indian advertising design, you know, sitting together, getting acquainted with the nuances of working in an agency, and they are joining on the same day. Uh, so it is very important to understand that uh, it is in April 1943 that Ray joined DJ Kima. And on 30th October 1943, in the same year, DK Gupta actually created the Signet Press. So DK used to work at DJ Kima, but in a way he also has his day job, as I say, is at DJ Kima. But his, you know, he was also paying attention to the building of, you know, kind of a publication. And it happened with the advent of Signet Press. Uh, so Signet Press was born on 30th October, 1943. Uh, remember 30th October was also the birth uh, you know, to, can be you know, the birth of Shukumar Roy, uh, who is the father of Shottojit Roy, was commemorated. And it is on that day that uh, DK Gupta, along with 
Nilima Devi, who was who was to be later uh, his mother-in-law, uh, you know, actually founded the Signet Press. Shoto Chitroy was assigned with the responsibility of what he called bookmaking. And I'm not talking about cover design here only, but bookmaking. I think that's a very, very important term, especially to be evoked in context of Signet, uh, which we will see later. So it is very important to understand that, uh, you know, Ray was juggling two jobs. On one hand, he was doing advertising, uh, which was mostly tailor-made for campaigns and for clients, you know, kind of brief and all that, which was boring according to Ray, uh, you know, uh, in DJ Kima. On the other hand, he was actually doing covers, he was doing adverts, he was doing title pages for Signet Press. And it is the work at Signet Press that you know, gave him the freedom you know, to express himself. And it is not only Ray, you know, even others like Onno Damunshi, Makhon Dattagupta, who are also working in DJ Kimo, they used to also you know, participate sometimes in the design of you know, Signet books. So it is very interesting to understand that you know, here, here are you know, a group of people, very talented people who, is, who are working in an advertising agency, who are acquainted, uh, you know, mostly with the workings, you know, kind of a kind of a professional setup. They are also trying to express themselves, uh, you know, through a publishing company, which is trying to break all kind of rules, you know, uh, rules of the game that they have. It is very interesting to note that uh, when Ray went abroad later in 1949-50, his first visit. Uh, he could actually probably, there is no mention of it, see uh, uh, an exhibition where Ray's covers were displayed. One of the first exhibitions of book covers, which were actually done in Victoria and Albert a Museum, London. And three of Ray's signet covers were actually displayed there. So Ray was there in PJ Kimo uh, till I think about uh, 15, uh, 1956, uh, 55, 56, after that Pothek Panchali was released. But I think he took a kind of a sabbatical, you know, after 1952, when Pothet Pateli shoot, shooting was actually happening. So, you know, from 1943 to, you know, 19, around 19, you know, 55, maybe 53, 55, you know, let us don't, I'm not making it, you know, too, uh, uh, you know, uh, fixed date there, you know, you know th this is the time when Ray was actually doing a lot of things and he was actually thinking about design in a very radical way. Now, uh, this is, of course, one of the picture of Ray walking at DJ Kimor. And one of the things that this picture does is, of course, uh, you know, look at the kind of professional setup that DJ Kimor had. So, you know, uh, one of the things that I always talk about while talking about Ray as a designer is that, uh, you know, although he was always trying to imprint his signature here and there, not only Ray, others and all that, he's also very much part of a system. And it is very important to understand that Ray was not outside the system when he began. Yes, he innovated, but mostly within a kind of an ecosystem which was almost predetermined, which was almost there. Uh, so, you know, uh, this is a picture of DK Gupta. So, you know, I have rounded DK Gupta here. Uh, this is one of the meetings in DJ Kimo. You can see Ray sitting uh, and, D, uh, you know, DK Gupta. This is, of course, a picture of DK Gupta. And this is uh, his wife, Nundini. Now, before I, you know, talk about Signet Press, you know, I, I, I told you that Signet Press was created on 30th October, 1943. And that's also the birth date of Shukumar Rai. So there was this uh, kind of a uh, kind of an event where this uh, brochure was brought out, and uh, this was on Shukumar Rai. And initially, Nilima Devi and uh, uh, Dike Gupta wanted to actually republish the books of Shukumar Rai. You know, Shukumar Rai was published by other publishers for not giving money to Ray's family. So Dike actually took that opportunity in order to get the rights of the book. And he wanted to actually publish Shukumar Rai in a very radically different way. So when Signet Press started, you know, uh, you know, one of the questions that you need to ask is, uh, 
it is of course something uh, that was written by Nilima Devi in one of the essays. There is this Bengali essay uh, which Nilima Devi wrote, which is called Amadev Signet Press. If you translate it, it will be like Our Signet Press. There, she's actually talking about something very, very interesting. And it is important to know that uh, the kind of mentality uh, that Nilima Devi had, you know, uh, and the kind of trigger that acted behind the establishment of the press. So there is this, he, she actually talks about a Latin quote, uh, poeta nascitu non, non fit, a poet of course is born, not made. Uh, but what he, what she adds is that, you know, a reader can always be made, you know, a reader can be tailor-made, you know, and be created, an audience can be created, their taste can be created. And that can be created uh, through the production of a aesthetic artifact called the book. So the book is just not a kind of a material artifact, you know, but it's something beyond that. It is of course a material artifact, but it's something much more than that. So one of the things that, you know, we Bengalis use, we use the word, you know, boy shilpo. And this word shilpo is, you know, kind of a, you know, you can always, uh, you know, interpret the word in two ways. One, of course, Shilpo is the aesthetics of bookmaking, the aesthetics of book, but Shilpo is also industrial. So, you know, there is this, you know, subliminal meaning of something which is much more systemic, you know, systemic in the way books are made. So also say, for example, boy nirman, you know, the word nirman is construction, production. So, you know, these words, construction, production, they are key words, you know, and they, and they are very important in context of the running of a, of a publication house. So, you know, we tend to, you know, sometimes overplay, you know, the individuality of an artist like Shukhtoti Troy, because later on he became very, very famous. But it is very important to understand that, uh, you know, uh, this idea of production, you know, this idea of transactionality in design is very, very important. So we have, of course, the idea of rigor coming to play here, you know, the, the, over, the overwhelming effect of technology, you know, whatever technology was there during that time. The economics of production, being very, very important, you know, the printing processes, okay, and the innovations that are coming the way, coming their way, and also the marketing of the books. So once uh, you produce something uh, beautiful, you need to market it, you need to reach out to the audience. And Signet Press actually, you know, takes cognizance of everything, you know, so from the manuscript to the marketing, you know, to, to make the book reach the right people, to make the reader, to create the reader, or to create the taste of the reader, you know, Signet was involved in everything. And that make them very, very unique. So it's not as if, you know, Signet is the first press that is actually, you know, taking Indian book design to a different level. There are other presses as well before that, of course. Uh, but what is very important is this conscious, uh, you know, ideas that, you know, the Signet creators had, Nilima Devi and DK Gupta had, regarding the way, you know, a book can be transmitted kind, a, a, as a kind of a, an object in the market, because ultimately you need to buy the book. It's also something that plays out uh, its role in a kind of a commercial transaction. So it is an art object, but that doesn't mean it is just merely an art object. It also has a kind of an end to it, kind of an utilitarian value to it. And you need to create that audience so that you can sustain the press, uh, you know, almost, uh, 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 sustain the press after uh, after a certain period of time. So uh, these are very, very important ideas. So a lot of things that we see in Signet Press are actually part of the processes. Ray, of course, incidentally is at the center of it, but by no means is the only person who is, you know, uh, actually negotiating this transactionality. And this is something I always insist in my lecture, that there are, in anything that I tell, that Ray is one of many that walked in the making of the book, uh, in making Signet, the kind of uh, you know, publication house it became. 
So uh, Ray's, uh, of course, one of the responsibility that DK gave to Ray was to design book covers. And, uh, you know, of course, Ray started doing book covers when he was actually a student, you know, he was just going to Shantini Ketan. So the first book cover of Ray is not for Signet Press. And it is actually a book cover for a company called MC Sharkar and Sons. It's actually a book cover called Pagla Dashu, which was written by his father. Incidentally, the book cover fell into Ray's lap because it was written by his father and the son uh, could actually, you know, it, it will be a very interesting choice, you know, that the son is actually doing the book cover of his father's work. And this is, you know, the, if you look at the blue cover, this is actually the first cover that is done by Ray. And uh, you can see the kind of interaction that Ray builds up, you know, kind of, you know, what we call the kind of a, you know, kind of a tact in gaze, you know, look, look at Pagla Dashu, the titular character winking at the audience. And it's kind of a, kind of a, you know, metafictional bond that is, you know, brought to play with the audience and Ray does it here. But later on, when this book went to Signet Press, you know, that part is, of course, much muted by Ray. And then, of course, in, in 1946, so six years later, when Ray redesigned it, he, of course, uh, was much more uh, accomplished as far as brushstrokes and, you know, drawing and illustration is concerned. But that fun element in the first cover is gone from there. This cover uh, by Signet Press, uh, as it was reworked, was actually also, you know, in the process, you know, Ondo the Munshi, the art director at DJ Kimor actually helped uh, Ray. So, you know, if you look at the kind of publication page or the verso page of the book, you can see the people who have actually helped Ray in, in making the book a kind of a possibility. So, as Ray began to, you know, uh, do cover designs, uh, one of the dilemmas that uh, he faced was the kind of design that uh, he, he, need, he wanted to do in order to almost break free of the clutter in the market. You know, uh, of course, uh, DK wanted to do, you know, a book cover which is, you know, high on art and art object and art movements. And of course, uh, Ray's Shanti Niketan education came in handy to a point. But, you know, Ray is also a person who is working in an advertising agency and he had access to a lot of magazines from abroad. I think one of the most important magazine in the, uh, you know, formative years of Ray is Gebrosh Graphic and Graphis. And both of them championed, you know, the Bauhaus design during that time. And, you know, Ray and others actually subliminally, you know, sipped in the influences of Bauhaus during that time. Even before he joined, uh, you know, Signet Press, Ray actually designed another cover. And this is for Shonket Bhavun. And this is called uh, Chatu Babu Chata, which translates as the umbrella of Chatu Babu by Kamakhi Prashat Chattopadhyay. And here you can see that the influence of Esha, uh, you can see the background. And if you look at the background, you can see how, you know, the pattern, you know, uh, the play of pattern is typical Esha. So, so, you know, what is very interesting is that from the very first moment, Ray actually, you know, decided something very, very important while he was doing covers. And this is something that he also conveys to DK in a lot of, letters or small, small notes that are there. Uh, he says that, you know, um, uh, you know, in order to be a great cover designer, you need to be like a chameleon. You know, you need to suit the purpose of the book. The design should be, you know, indicative of the book, you know. So it's very important not to get stuck into a kind of a signature uh, style, because if you are stuck in a signature style, you know, I don't think that you can do just justice to the kind of book that is being created for a particular purpose. So here is a person who wants to, you know, you know, do a book the way, you know, a book, uh, the, the, the content of the book dictates. So, you know, when you are doing a children book or when you are doing a, when, when we are doing a kind of a poetry book or when we are doing a political memoir, you know, the treatment is radically different from each other. You know, sometimes it is almost difficult for Ray to settle on a style and he doesn't settle on a style because for him, it is the demands of the book that is paramount. He as an artist can come later, of course, because it is 
he is actually doing something to the service of the book, you know, rather than, you know, he expressing himself, you know, uh, paramountly, you know, through certain kind of fancy art uh, that that me that me that he may think about. So this is of course uh, uh, Kirir Putul. So if you look at the left hand side, Kirir Putul, that cover is actually the first cover that Reeb designed for Signet Press. This is Kirir Putul, is by Obaninra Tagore. And if you look at this, uh, you know, work, you can easily see that uh, Ray is actually making very interesting calligraphy, uh, of course, Kirir Putul. So these are Bengali calligraphy, he's experimenting with it. And he's also, you know, drawing it with pen and brush, you know, uh, literally drawing the subject with pen and brush. Uh, what is very interesting is, of course, the color choices and the kind of you know, symmetrical division of the background behind. And this is also something that Ray will actually play with a lot. You know, the very idea of, you know, white space or blank space being the marker or in a way being the marker of doing something very interesting. You know, this idea of minimalism taking hold of, um, of the entire cover and almost forcing the reader to concentrate on the subject that is at hand. Now, what is very interesting here is, of course, although this was done in 1944, later on, Signet came up with a paperback volume. And if you look at it, the format has changed. And if you look at the format, it's more horizontal, you know, rather than vertical format. And this is something that Signet used to do. So if a book is popular, they would bring up a paperback or they will just tinker with the format in order to extend its life or in order to extend its audience beyond the obvious one that we have, that, that, that they already have. So this is also kind of a strategy on part of, you know, Signet to expand their audience, uh, in a way, what they call the expand the taste of their audience. You know, they, they, it's almost as if they are testing their audience, of course, um, uh, and, and, and looking at, uh, at the way audiences, you know, respond uh, to a particular format, to a particular illustration style, and likewise. So, so when we look at Ray's cover, you know, covers, you know, for Signet, it is also very instructive to know the kind of editions, you know, being made, the kind of extensions that each book had, and the kind of life that, you know, that was almost extended through different formatting options that Signet chose. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know, maybe after one or two years, you know, when, when a book needs to be recirculated in a certain way. Now, what is very interesting for Ray when we did when he did the designs initially, this is Buro Angla again by Obonino Tagore. Uh, one of the very interesting choices that he made was, you know, his idea about angularity, geometrical angularity, and and the way. Of course, Bauhaus plays a huge, huge role, but this idea of uh, uh, geometrical angularity, you know, is something that we see, you know, in the initial years, uh, at least uh, of, uh, of signet design by Ray. So if you look at this, this is very, very unique uh, design. And if you can look at it, it's like, you know, um, uh, squares, of course, which are almost you know, turned in various directions in order to create triangles out of that. Uh, what is very really interesting here is, uh, you know, this kind of patterning is something that you can easily do in advertising and that we don't, or maybe when you do as drafts in advertising and that is almost rejected in advertising circles. So what was rejected as drafts in advertising could be used uh, in a very different way uh, in a, say, a publication form. So, you know, what Ray couldn't do in advertising, you know, play with certain patterns because ultimately the visual uh, index in advertising was almost predetermined, almost predetermined in a certain way, you know, almost playing to the market, which is sometimes not so receptive. Ray, on the other hand, could actually make a lot of calibration, a lot of innovation in the way he designed these covers in order to create a kind of a new aesthetics. Uh, so if you look at, say, these covers, you know, this idea of pattern, patterning becomes very, very important. So this is Bohurupi, which can be translated as chameleon. And this is also by Shukumar Rai. And this is a very interesting cover uh, on the right-hand side. 
It's called Kai Kai. So I don't think there is an equivalent word in English. So I've translated it as eat, eat. But what is very interesting is, uh, is the way the bodies multiplies, you know, and, and the gestural tone, you know, almost creating uh, the cover, you know. So there is no focus in the cover because it is actually about excesses when you eat and eat and eat and, you know, and look at the way the rows are created. So you are, you have already got one, two, three, four, five rows and people, you know, sitting to eat somebody, of course, serving it. And look at the way that the, the parallelism of the rows were broken, you know, almost diagonally by the gesture of the people serving food. I think it's one of the best covers that we designed for Signet. It, this book actually won a kind of an international award for production values as well. And, 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 and in a way, it, 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 it breaks a lot of new ground, you know, because this kind of book cover was never seen in Bengal, probably not seen in India before that, you know. This is done in 1950. And even today, I don't think you will get, you know, kind of revolutionary cover that we designed for Kai Kai uh, uh, during that time. Now, if you go, you know, ahead, you can see, you know, this patterning became a kind of an obsession with Ray. And I have this feeling that probably it's not only an obsession with Ray because DK also dictated a lot of things during that time. And I feel that, you know, this idea of patterning is a kind of a, collaborative, you know, is a result of some collaborative discussions, you know, you know, maybe this idea of patterning in order to, you know, create a kind of a focus on a kind a, a drawing or an illustration that defines the subject of the book uh, became a kind of a stylistic device that Signet Press began to use in his initial years, you know, 44, 45 in the initial years. So if you look at the Jhalapala cover, which can translate as cacophony, or if you look at this very fun book called Kumir Kumir, Croc Croc, I have translated it. So Crocodile, Crocodile, whatever by Premendra Mitro. Uh, you can see, you know, that playing out. In fact, I will try to show you the entire book uh, of Kumir Kumir or Croc Croc, because I think if you can see one book in entirety, you will be better placed to understand what Signet Press was doing during that time. What actually interests me here, of course, is this cover by uh, Lila Mojumdar, Deen Dupure. Now, Deen Dupure is not meant for adults. So that's a very, very interesting thing. It was meant for children initially. So Deen Dupure can translate as midday. And if you look at the cover, which is made up of isometric, you know, squares, you know, you never understand initially, you know, what it is made for. It's a wonderful cover, of course, it won a lot of accolades later, but to, you know, to somehow, you know, collapse the entire metaphorical weight of a book into this, you know, yellow isometric squares is something that Ray think is thinking of and probably he is influenced by Bauhaus. Uh, you know, at least uh, as far as this design is concerned, you know, this Bauhaus's obsession with, you know, geometric simplification, you know, or, you know, maybe making abstract geometrical, uh, geometric shapes in a very simplified way uh, is something that Ray was getting obsessed with, you know, almost during that time. So if you look further, you know, this same pattern plays out and look at this, say, for example, this is a very interesting idea. Of course, this is about a man eater. This is the translation of Jim Corbett's uh, Kumayunen Manush Kekobag, uh, uh, the man eater of Kumayun. And Ray, instead of putting a tiger, which is probably the temptation, uses, of course, the back of the tiger, the height of the tiger, the pattern of the tiger. And it's almost like a scenic doshi, you know, part for the whole. You know, you just put the part in order to depict the whole. It's a very old trick but something that was not done in Bengali before. Another very interesting thing to note is of course, the way the blurb is, you know, you know, placed, you know. So this is one of the covers where I've actually, you know, put the spread here. So look at this, uh, uh, look at, these are bullet holes, of course. So if you look at the way the bullet hole is actually passing from the front cover to the back cover, you can see that, you know, it enters, when it enters the skin of a tiger, 
it doesn't make a big hole. But of course, when it comes out, it makes a bigger hole. So the bigger hole nestles the blurb and the smaller hole, you know, nestles, uh, you know, the title and the name of the, the name of the, the name of the author. So what I'm trying to say is that this kind of, you know, uh, cerebral cover is something that was not seen before. And frankly, it is almost, you know, becoming much more known in the you know intellectual circles of Bengal as he was doing this cover. This is done in 53, when he's almost known as a cover designer of repute, of some repute. And this created a lot of you know uh, appreciation in the circles. Another cover that that really made an impact is of course uh, Parum Purush Sri Sri Ramakrishna, which can be translated as Sri Ramakrishna, the Supreme Being. Of course, it's a book on uh, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. It's a kind of religious book. It's not purely a religious book, but you know, it has these shades of spirituality that has been discussed here. And Ray actually uses, uh, you know, this. Uh, patterns, you know, this Vaishnava patterns. Uh, I really don't know how he does it because Ramakrishna doesn't belong to that uh, sect, but he does use that in a very, very interesting way. Probably, you know, the Alpuna, which was basically a kind of a, became an art form in Shantinikatan, may have subliminally uh, influenced uh, Ray here. So we can easily understand that even while doing the patterns, he was not stuck in you know, one kind of a pattern. So he was actually trying to do the patterning as it suits the book. Sometimes it's a kind of a leap of faith as he does you know, take a leap of faith in Lila Mujumdar's book, Dindupure, The Midday. Or here, of course, this is much more obvious because it is related to the realms of spirituality. Uh, later on, you know, the patterns became much more complex. So this actually you know, makes me remind me of late Mondrian, okay? Uh, you know, so you can easily see the patterns, uh, you know, it's called Ferrari Forge, the lost army. And here also, you don't have the obvious depiction of any, any, any visual element in the cover. So what, it, what they do, what Ray does, is actually, you know, depicted in a very, very different way. This one was actually part of the V&A &A exhibition later on and it, it incarnated a lot of appreciation. So, you know, to cut a long story short, you know, uh, this is something, you know, I have chosen all these three covers in order to make my point very, very clear. So on one hand, you have say a book like Neil Nirjan, uh, which is basically, you know, uh, the blue silence, if you translate it, then you have, uh, which is basically a book of poems by Nirendra Chakraborty. And here you can see Ray is written creating the waves, you know, through paper cards, of course, uh, but doing it in a very, very interesting way. Look at the way the placement of the font happens. So Neil Nirjani, you can see that the, all the letters are dissociated from each other and they are almost riding the wave, okay? So this idea of separating the letter accentuates almost the metaphor of silence that the title, you know, talks about. And if you look at the cover in the middle, which is basically a cover on, uh, on a book of essays on Marxism and Paschatto Darshan and Dhara, which is basically the Western philosophy. What he does is uses, you know, a stack of colors, you know, something which is, which talks about many shades of thoughts that all these things may have. So what I'm trying to say that, you know, even when we look at say Pratidhan uh, echoes, if you translate it in Bengali, from Bengali, you can see the sound bars and the way the letters are again dissociated from each other in order to echo of each other. So, you know, literally and metaphorically, you're using the title, you know, from the book in order to make a kind of play a game uh, with the layout, with the composition, with the visual elements. And the letters themselves, you know, the Bengali letters themselves, the letters from the title themselves are actually, you know, great, you know, material for making such play, you know, very much apparent. So, you know, when we analyze these covers, we can always, you know, make more and more, give more and more insights. But what I'm trying to look at is the way, you know, Ray is almost choosing his horses for the courses. You know, it's for each book, he has a clear idea of what he's trying to do. And he's not getting stuck, 
in, in one kind of a style, which a lot of cover designers before him, you know, did, or, or, or an artist of his creature, you know, whatever he himself regards himself as, he didn't regard himself too much of an artist. But even as an artist of his creature, the temptation is to develop the signature style. I, as a cover designer, always want to develop a signature style. But here is Ray, who really didn't want to, you know, actually do a kind of a signature style. I think he's influenced by DK in this matter, because if you look at the correspondences with DK, you know, DK, that Dilip Kumar Gupta, you know, he is very, very clear in the instructions that he sends out to the designers that, you know, we have to hear uh, the voice from within the book in order to design a cover and don't get bogged down by what we call premeditated thinking, you know? So, you know, when we actually, every book is like a you know, blank slate and we almost design from, you know, kind of blank slate and it's the brief, the cover brief. We haven't got any cover brief, but I will show you some letter where we actually can find the residue of a cover brief. Again, something unthinkable of during that time, you know, in Bengal or any part of India, we can see, you know, that DK actually used to give cover briefs uh, or at least used to have long discussions about the books uh, before the design actually comes to play. Now, look at these two covers again. Now, this is very, very interesting. So on one hand, you have Nalok by Obunin Tagore, uh, which is on Buddha, and you can easily understand the Ajanta fresco, you know, coming to play. And of course, it's drawn by Satyajit himself. And look at the other book uh, on the right-hand side by Omiyo Chakraborty Parapar. And you can see that pen and ink drawing, very simple drawing, but very patterned and, and very decorative. And the way, again, the title, you know, the Parapar, if you translate it in English, it's called Crossings. And you can see how the title plays up, you know, how he actually separates each title, each letter of the title, and, you know, builds up a kind of a breach, you know? So, you know, the word Parapar, which means crossings, actually play out within the metaphor of the visual you know index that is built through a kind of a pattern that you know that is done this is of course vibhuti bhushan's uh, chander pahar the mountain of the moon and again you can see uh, you know ray's style in action here look at the background the the, the, the pen and ink foliage and and, and and the foreground which is you know filled up and you know, almost silhouetted but you know, done with a very stylized brief. So, you know, what I'm trying to say is that if you look at this work, uh, again, uh, if you look at, say, Hukka Hua by Shanta Devi, uh, this is, again, uh, a work where uh, you can see the fonts making a very interesting, you know, so, the, so the, 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 the call of the fox, as it is said, you know, the echo, the, the sound made by the fox actually is recreated in the letters. And if you look at it, it breaks all the conventions of cover designs because the name of the author, uh, you know, the, the name of the author is actually there, but it's not, you know, distinguished from the title. So all of these hukkah, if you look at it, they are titles in Bengali. And here you have the author's name only here but it's not separated. It's as if it's part of the cacophony of sound that the fox is actually trying to make. So this kind of very, very interesting, what I call spin-offs, uh, taken directly from the title, taken directly from the subjects, from the themes of the books, became a kind of a staple, you know, kind of a, you know, a, a signet war. Now, if you look at the figurative, if we move from pattern, and if you look at the you know, figurative quality of Ray's design, and you can see that Ray probably subliminary is influenced by Tagore's painting as well, uh, at least in the middle cover, which is actually called Amabusha, the new moon, if you translate it, you can see Ray breaking each and every rule you know, of cover design. You know, I haven't seen any cover design like this even today. So what, Amabush, of course, it's, you know, there is no light in it. And if you can see, what he does is he takes a black paper and from within the black paper, he uses a pastel, a white pastel, and, you know, draws the profile of the lady. But what is very interesting is the placement of the title. So the placement of the title, you know, is it's almost as if it's tucked away, it's hidden, you know? So again, 
you can easily understand the way you know Ray is playing up the title and is using it as part of visual symbolism of the cover. Uh, if you look at Junaki, for example, here also we have pattern and the kind of a profile being drawn. But again, very, very different from the patterns that we have seen before. The Bonolata Shen cover of Jibanananda Dash is, of course, very much criticized. Jibanananda himself didn't like it. Uh, it is a very iconic uh, poem collection uh, created by Jibanananda, and he didn't like it. He actually said that uh, the Bonolata, Bonolata Shen, you know, the, 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 the face you know, doesn't make the cut. But if you look at the cover, you know, Ray is actually trying to do something very, very interesting. Ray is actually creating a kind of translucence with his drawing. And you know, the kind of foregrounded pattern of foliage from within which, you know, the face comes out, you know, creates that sense of, you know, translucence. Uh, of course, we can analyze these covers separately. And my aim is not to analyze each and every cover, but my aim is to actually look at the way Ray is trying to build up a kind of a visual idiom without being, you know, too restrictive. You know, what I'm trying to say is that he's almost building up, you know, block by block, not only he, he with his other collaborators, they're building up a kind of a new identity for each and every book. But, but, but he's not at all, you know, creating a kind of a signature identity that runs like an umbilical cord. So each book is different. Of course, it bears a kind of a signet legend, but it's not as if it is immediately identifiable by a kind of a lineage. So each book has a kind of a history of its own, has, a, has its own kind of visual burden, which he almost negotiates. And that is something that makes brilliant, you know, sense during that time, because each book has a different kind of audience. Each book has a different kind of, is building up a different kind of audience. And Secret is so, so interested in building up this ecosystem. So if you look at the reader, the book itself, and the, and the writer, of course, you know, these three bonds, you know, and the way these three bonds become a kind of a, a, a bond that is based on, that is also dependent on production. Uh, there's a kind of a transactionality between the three in order to make these things uh, very, very interesting during that time. If you just continue with the profile things and you can see that why I'm telling, you know, Ray is like a chameleon. So if you look at Ontorongo, which I have translated as intimacies by Ochinta Kumar Shengupto, he's actually drawing the profile of a lady, but look at the way he's using colors. He's using, of course, the red and green colors in order to almost do paper cuts and build up the visage in a very interesting way. Look at the title, of course, which is very, very exciting. It is vertically done. It's vertically aligned. It's not horizontal, something that Ray does a lot of times. And then look at, say, Vishnu Des, Ramrik, Ramrik, Komal Gandhar. I have named her Komal Gandhar. And you can easily understand that this is actually a recreation of the Kaligat part. You know, it's it's there. You know, I, 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 I don't have the Kaligat part here. But I do have it later. I, I, you know, if you wish, I can show it to you. So it's almost like a recreation. But what it does is very interesting. You put it in a kind of a black background, and create a, 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 and create a kind of a outline of the of the pot figure. And if you look at Duranto Dupur, which I have translated as unruly moon, uh, the kind of sexuality that the lady uses is very matis like. You can see there is a lot of matis in Duranto Dupur. So you know, so you know, you don't get stuck into a kind of a one kind of a one way traffic. You try to develop this bouquet of, you know, styles and trying to fit it within the artifact that the book itself, uh, it is the demand, the, the demands of the artifact. This is Indrani uh, and look at Indrani. Uh, that this is of course, Ray's radical experiment with letter forms in Bengali. So Indrani, of course, by Yachintu Kumar Shingrupta, but look at the way the concentric circles again become so, so important, you know, the geometrical uh, quality of the letters and the way that later on when Ray will do say con covers, he will play with these, you know, letter forms, you know, so a con, I don't have 
you know, the scope to show it here, but all of you who knows Ekkon cover, he will separate Ekkon A, Kiyomoi, and Mudhanno. These are all letters uh, in Bengali, and he will play with it. Similarly, Indrani, look at the way he has separated the letters. You know, this dissociation of letters is something that Ray is extremely fond of and does quite often. And that is something that I find it very interesting. Uh, and when we look at calligraphy or say typography or the use of typography, you see how radical he can be. And I'm, I'm not talking only of Ray, you know, I think even DK has a role to play here because every book used to pass through DK's gaze. And it's very difficult to please him, frankly. So look at Doshumi by Shudhinra Dotto. Almost bare, you know, almost reminded of the Vishwabharati, you know, books, or before that, the Galimar book, you know, where we only have the title and the name of the author, you know, on paper. Or if you look at, say, Gyan Prakash Ghosh's Elem Notun Desher, you know, in a new land, which is basically a visit to Soviets, uh, there you can actually have the, you know, the star, and you know, and just do a small drawing and make things absolutely fine. Or look at Dushor Pandolipi, which I have actually translated as decrepit manuscript. This is Jibarananda Dash, where he is actually using that you know handwriting style to create the title page of a manuscript. That you know the scribbled style. Or you go to orchestra, which is of course paper cuttings, and you can see that the way every element of the letter is broken up. And if you know Bengali, and if you don't know Bengali, it doesn't matter. What is very interesting, he is not only separating the letter, he's actually separating even, you know, the joinings of the letter, the joints of the letter as it is. And it's almost, you know, you know, prizing them apart. But remember, orchestra is also about collective. It's all about being together, although everything plays separately out as well. So this cover almost becomes a metaphor of what orchestra is all about. So, you know, even through evocation of, you know, letter forms and the way they can be separated, they can be, you know, played around, you can actually make sense of the book or you can at least create a visual impact with the cover of the book. Later on, of course, Punen Dupotri, another great designer, will actually make this a kind of a signature style, you know, his style. Now look at these, you know, these are again play with calligraphy or typography. So one is Shukumar Rai's Bornomala Tatto, which is basically theory of letters or theory of letter forms. And you can see the way, you know, one letter is, you know, in red, others are, you know, you know the, the kind of differentiation in shapes and sizes that plays out. Or if you look at Bede, Bede is of course gypsy, translated as gypsy. And look at the way the form of Bede, you know, look at the way the B and they, you know, so again, that division and look at the kind of symmetry the word has. So B, they, you know, both are cognates, but they are separable and they are separated almost by a red, you know, uh, red differentiator within which the title is written or simple handwriting. Or, you know, if you look at simple handwriting, so love, you know, poems of 25 years, where you have just simple handwriting, pure calligraphy, which carries the day. So, you know, what I'm trying to say again and again and again is that what Ray does in Signet is that he, 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 he becomes a believer of what a specific book demands. And later on, of course, uh, when we look at his own books, when he comes to Shondesh, you know, much, much later when he will do his own Feluda and his own, you know, Shonku and all these books, he will incidentally develop a style. Yet, you know, he doesn't draw Feluda same at all. He could have easily done it, right? Because it is part of a series. But if you look at the Feluda books, all of them are drawn differently. Although you can make out Feluda, you know, the titular character, but the style is very, very di different. And this is, of course, the book that made Signet Press very famous across India, the discovery of India. What's very interesting is, of course, the production of the book. And if you have the book, this is from my book. But, you know, the, the gold, if you can look at the gold background, the, the locked pattern, the golden locked pattern, it took a lot of effort. There is this legend of uh, Jawaharlal Nehru coming to visit uh, Signet office <laughs> and, and trying to look at the galley prints and all that, you know, all these are, of course, stuff of legions. And when Mundini, uh, 
who later became the wife of uh, uh, D.K. Gupta, actually showed the Nehru uh, the galley proofs and all that. So all these are stuff of legend. But this actually made, uh, you know, uh, Signet kind of a force to reckon with. Uh, they became also very popular across India. Ashok, uh, the Professor Ashok Chatterjee was showing this cover uh, last day as uh, one of the signposts, you know, signposts of design in India. Now, you know, I have shown you the covers, but you know, I'm not too, you know, I, I don't want to restrict myself on covers only. And because, you know, when we look at the entire system, the ecosystem, as I'm actually repeating myself again and again, a book is more than a cover. So when you are actually a bookmaker, you don't just make a cover. You just don't, you know, your job doesn't, you know, it is not finished when you just get a cover. You do the title pages, you may do the layout, you may do the inside. So each and every nuances, every design nuances that can be brought out can be done. And very few people actually know how good the title pages and the hub title pages of Signet Press were. And again, look at this. So this is Amati Bhipu, the mango seed whistle, which actually later became Kothet Panchali. They have breached version of Kothet Panchali, really. And this is the title page. This is Bonolata Shin's title page in the middle. And this is Bhudar Bhadu. So all these are different kind of books, different genres, very, very different from each other. And each, you know, the title page of each has a kind of distinctiveness. So, you know, of course, even the Signet Press, Signet Press doesn't have a logo, frankly. It's only Signet Press, Calcutta 23. So if you look at this, even the, you know, the writing, you know, is very different. So, you know, the Signet Press writing actually is almost done in consonance with the title page. So when you do, say, a Bhudur Bahadur cover page, you write Signet Press in bold because the Bhudur Bahadur, you know, font or the type is in bold. When you do the Bonolatashen, which is slighter, much finer, the Signet Press is almost arranged like that. Look at the space between Signet Space that is there and the space that is there between Bonolatashen. And both of them almost run parallel to each other. They mirror their presence, you know. So this is something to be, you know, looked at. You know, all these small, small things. And I, I dare say you have the mind of DK working behind it because he used to take, you know, cognizance of each and everything of the bookmaking process. And these are, again, very, very different. And that's rushing through because uh, we have a lot of things to show. So probably, you know, the time will be premium. There will be a lot of questions. So look at this again. Uh, these are, again, very, very different kind of pages. We're all coming from Signet Press. What I always want you to see is look at the byline. Look at the way Signet Press is written. So Signet Press had a logo. I said earlier that Signet Press didn't have a logo. They actually had a logo. It was not used regularly. So look at Signet Press logo. Can you see this? Initially, they had a logo. And then, of course, they did away with the logo. So one of the reasons is, of course, because, you know, if you have a logo, it also creates that encumbrance, you know, not to design the title page accordingly. So it's better to play with type and spacing rather than have a logo, because a logo may create a brand, but it may also be a kind of a speed breaker to the kind of you know, design synergy I'm trying to project. So look at this. So look at, say, Bohurupi. Uh, this is the chameleon, Pagla Dashu. So look at the way Signet Press is written. So it is written, you know, right aligned. The others are middle aligned. But look at the way Signet, the, the difference of typography of Signet Press and the way this is written. So, you know, all these nuances are very, very important. Look at Kirir Putul, this is Shilpayon, uh, and this is again Ruposhi Bangla. All these are title pages. Look at the Ruposhi Bangla title page, and you will understand how much thinking, uh, you know. So, you know, that kind of, that red, you know, uh, across, you know, it, it just makes it, it almost makes the entire page leap up. And look at the way Ruposhi and Bangla, they are slightly different from each other. You know, the fonts are not exactly the same, you know? So all these small, small things were almost done intentionally, consciously. One of my favorite, favorite title page, uh, you know, is this in all these three. So if you look at Sharat Chandra's Boitoki Golpo, which is basically, you know, anecdotal tales, you have the hookah, and here you can actually have words, you know, creating the visual of the hookah. Or if you have Parapa, remember the Parapa, you know, uh, cover and inside you have a very different 
Parapar title page. So I'll just go back to Parapar once because look at the cover. So this is the cover of Parapar, which is extremely decorative, uh, extremely you know meticulously done, almost you know the finer details being made out. And here you have, sorry for the quickness. Okay, and you have this. It's completely bare. You just have this, you know, lines, you know, almost like an urban map. And so the crossing is, you know, the idea of crossing is almost played out twice. Once in the cover and again in the title page. And I dare say sometimes also in the illustration. Look at Pratid Dhoni. So this is again very, very interesting. So Pratid Dhoni means echoes. And look at the way these letters are separated and they echo each other. It's almost like the hands of the clock. And again, let me go back to the Pratiddhani cover and you can see why it is so radically different. So what he's trying to do really, he is almost replaying the metaphor of the book twice over, once in the cover and again in the title page. And sometimes if there is kind of scope, he can do it in the illustration as well. And so this is very, very exciting, you know, for me, as a practicing cover designer, because we don't get to do title pages most of the time. And it is almost mechanically done now. And I really miss doing title pages. You know, So I, I always think as a cover designer, if I do a cover, I want to do a title page, which will almost echo on the cover, or it can play back on the cover. It can critique the cover. It can subvert the cover. And because it's so much part of the book. So if you go again, look at Dushwar Panduri P. Just the, and, but look at that orchestra one, the middle one. And you can see what Ray is trying to do with type. Look at the expansion. And you know, look at the way, you know, it almost expands horizontally. So, or Kestra, you know, the middle part is of course, you know, almost expanded. And then the cognate, Jontishai Tairofala, which is in Bengali, is almost, you know, constricted. So, you know, he, does, he doesn't do anything. So if you compare with other, you know, other stuff, he doesn't do anything here. But a simple, you know, expansion and constriction, you know, gets this done. So again, uh, if you remember the orchestra cover and this title page, they are so different from each other. So it's not only book to book, sometimes even within the same book, he's creating that chameleon-like quality. And this is something... You know, that's a new way of negotiating a kind of an object like book. So, you know, all these theories of modernism and all that, which, which of course comes to play when we talk about the development of, um, uh, of, 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 of publication during that time. But sometimes we are also thinking, Ray is also thinking from a very utilitarian point of view, you know, because for him, it is also a way to do the book over and over again. So there is this childish quality in Ray, you know, to reinterpret a book in many ways. So what he cannot do in the cover, he will probably do in the cattle pages. What is not... I hate to interrupt, but, you yeah. know, we have to round up, otherwise we can... Yeah, 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 we will, we will do it very, very quickly because it's it is... Very... Yeah, yeah, we will my... do it. Yeah, because... Yeah, I just rush through some stuff and... Uh, if you, if you've, gone, you've gone over an hour, so we really need oh, to... Oh, 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 I didn't know that. I'm sorry for that. But I'll just... Take five to seven minutes to wrap up and then maybe five minutes. Five yeah, minutes. Five, five. Okay. So if you look at the illustrations also, you can see that Ray is very much influenced by, say, Nondolal. If you look at Nondolal's illustration in George Park, for example, uh, these are kind of illustrations that you see. But again, what I want to show you is that these are Amati Bhepu's illustration. You know, later on, Amati Bhepu is the abridged version of, you know, Pothet Panchali. Uh, but this is actually not Bibhuti Bhushan's, but DK's abridge, ab ab abridgment. But if you look at, say, somebody like Makhon Dattu Gupta, these are not drawings by Ray, but these are drawings by Makhon Dattu Gupta. And this is done for Shokuntala, another book coming from the Signet Stable. And you can see the similarity there. It is as if, you know, all these people can almost interchange their styles, you know, during that time, because I have this suspicion that all this is coming up through a kind of a deep conversation among each other, a kind of a transactional uh, kind of a quality is there, a kind of exchange of ideas is happening. So a lot of ideation actually is happening during that time. Uh, 
So these are, again, illustrations from within the book. This is from Rup Chinta uh, by Shubhimol Bushu, and this is a signet press again. This is from Kirir Putul. So these are inside illustrations from the book. But these are also chapter divisions. So you can easily understand that Ray is not only doing the covers, and his responsibility doesn't end by doing covers. He's also doing these chapter divisions. He's almost doing everything that makes it visually attractive. What interests me about Signet is what happens after the book is produced. And this is where I'll just end, because this is something very, very exciting. Because Signet used to bring out these small brochures called Tukuro Katha, which is, you know, small small stuff, which were actually distributed free from the bookshop. They were actually about information about the books. And there was again one called Notun Pandulipi, new manuscript, which is lost because it only came out once. But Tukuro Katha became a kind of thing that became a kind of standard for informing you know, people about upcoming books. So if you look at the adverts of Signet Bookshop, and these are all adverts that are, they are done by Ray, sometimes mostly by Ray. So you know, Ray's job was not finished just by doing the covers. He was actually trying to extend it. You know, he's going beyond his brief and he's actually <coughs> doing the adverts as well. So look at this advert in the middle. Uh, you can see that he's almost imitating the manuscript of Tagore and is creating this advert in a very, very exciting way. Uh, you, know, it, it, you know, even before the, you know, so if you look at the entire, you know, creation process in the Signet Press thing, I'll just give you one example and keep it clear and we will stop after that. Maybe a small addendum and I will stop. So on the right hand side, you have the poet Shudhindranath writing letter to DK and giving his idea of what this cover would be like. So this is a draft made by, you know, Shudhindranath's wife. And he admits that she's not an artist, but this is the idea that I have. In the middle is actually the measurements for Ruposhi Bangla, but it could be the measurement for any book, a specific book that DK is giving. So this is DK's handwriting. And you can see the kind of specific quality he had. You know, he's, he's almost specifying the centimeter, everything, you know, by centimeter. And then Ray would come up with a draft of the design, Ray or other any other designer who are entrusted with the job. And then when the book comes out, you can see the title page. And you can see the title page, which is done very differently from the book. And then they will actually put adverts in Tukuro Kotha or in other newspapers where, you know, Ray himself or any other people who will be designing the book will actually be doing that. So, you know, you know so it's not only about cover. It's about the entire bookmaking process, almost as if controlling the visual idiom of an artifact, you know, from the beginning, from the moment it is born to the moment it's disseminated to the public. Ray, of course, got a lot of international accolades and I'll end my lecture with it. Uh, of course, uh, in graphics, he was acknowledged. So you can see in this corner, we have Ferrari Forge, the cover which I showed. Uh, it was acknowledged in graphics 1950. Uh, edition number 29. Uh, and he was also made part of an exhibition uh, in, uh, you know, Victoria and Albert Museum. And there, of course, Charles Rossner curated the museum. We have the, uh, we have the brochure for it. And you can see this page where Ray's three covers, Ferrari Foge, Dindupure, and Indrani is actually printed with the name Shottojit Roy. Uh, so there is another Indian book cover, but we don't know the artist. So you can easily see the kind of, uh, the, the idea about being an auteur was there, but even being an auteur doesn't mean that it's only about individuality. He is also trying to figure out the system in a slightly different way. You know, so there is a system, but he's also trying to play with the system to create that wee bit of individuality, you know, for himself uh, and for any other artist was you know doing during that time. So you know this is basically my presentation. But you know sometimes uh, when we do the signet book covers, you know, I have most of the books except for one or two. And uh, when we see at it, you know sometimes you know physical you know uh, verification of a book actually makes it much more pertinent because signet not only acknowledges the designers, they acknowledge the binders the block makers, you know, everybody who is involved in the production of the book. So I just hope that, you know, I haven't rambled too much and I have taken a lot of time. And unfortunately, despite taking, you know, keeping a kind of, you know, a stopwatch, 
but this is what Ray does to you, you know. I'm just stopping the share and maybe I'll stop the share. Okay. This was, you know, it's really a minefield of material that you've taken us through. Uh, with the kind of eye, the detail specialist eye, you know, you've taken us through every little corner. Now, what I'm going to do is, of course, a bit contrary, just like the book cover mm -hmm. and the title page right. move in contrary directions. So mm -hmm. I'm taking the liberty to slightly move in a different direction, yes. which I think is important simply because you provided us this amazing body of archival material on the making of the book on race and press years. So just for the sake of the larger series, I'd like to just sign for certain things that locates these years and Ray's work with Signet Press mm. within, as I would say, a larger spectrum. Now, one of the things I wanted to hear, therefore, immediately position is Calcutta during the 1940s and 50s, which is when Ray's leaves Shantiniketan very interestingly, wants to be a commercial artist, sent to Shantiniketan, comes away, joins an advertising firm. In a way, he goes against the canon completely, right? He, Shantiniketan has that thing, mm -hmm. but he wants to come away and he does it. So right. it's, it's a major break. It also shows the pull of the profession of commercial art, the mm -hmm. art of designing that is so important. But what I'd like to hear locate this wonderful enterprise of D.K. Gupta and Chattajit Rai is the fact that this genre we call commercial art, which is something that is not being catered to by Shantani Ketan and Srini Ketan, and it predates NID, the founding of NID, where book and communication and graphic design will find a major place. Right. I want to think about this institution called the Indian Institute of Art and Industry that is set up in Calcutta in 1941 in, uh, and is directly linked with the Government College of Art, exhibiting, and it focuses on the art of advertising and publicity. Now, for the first time in the Government College of Art and through this institution, not craft and not design in any broader sense, but simply the art of advertising and publicity and, does, and of graphic design gets a certain primacy or platform that is important to lay out. Mm. And what does the 40s also mark? The rise of the advertising agencies, Douglas Haynes will talk about the coming of the professional advertising agencies, mm. 20s, 30s, 40s is peak time. Mm. And the fact that Indian art and industry is carrying the sponsorship of firms like Burma Shell, mm. Metal Box, and same time the newspaper press, the railway, the tourism board, the tea marketing board. So to think about a consortium of commercial and a uh, business enterprise with government enterprise with the work of art and industry. You raise boys Shilpo. So Shilpo mm. here is both art, it's also That's industry. Mm. And I think therefore Ray's work speaks very directly to this movement of art and industry. Mm. And in fact, Ray in his DJ Kema years, the DJ Kema firm is directly involved in designing Indian art and industry. So the names of Makhonlal. You know, Dr. Gupta is there, <laughs> along with mm -hmm. I.B. Dash Gupta and Shibram Dash, who we don't know very much, right? Yeah, yeah. Again, it's teamwork that is doing it. So that I wanted to lay out because in this larger history of design that we want to lay out, I think Calcutta in the 30s, 40s, and 50s is playing a pioneering role, but in a very specific area, which is the art of advertising, publicity, and graphic design. So we'll be looking at Shantiniketan and we will be going to NID, and of course, yesterday, Professor Chatterjee's work laid that out. So this is something I want to hear really place to say that the Calcutta to which Ray returns from Shantiniketan is already emerging as a thriving center and the art and industry is for the first time profiling the art of advertising independent of the client, independent of whether it gets used 
it's being used. And they're actually saying that India's commercial art can equal the best in the world. Mm. Quite interesting. That's something I've written about. Secondly, uh, it's important, I think, here in the time is to balance the creative work of the advertising agency with the, the, the work of the book publishing mm. trade and unit. Now, you're saying that his advertising years were not as creatively satisfying as his creative work with Signal Press. But it's teamwork in both places. And I think it's important to also, therefore, he is, while working at DJ Kema, all the time working for mm -hmm. press too. So I think the parallelism between these two mm -hmm. different sites of creative work is not something we can ignore saying that one is purely commercial. Signet work is also commercial, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But there is a coming together of artists, intellectuals, writers, publishers, and artists, which marks Signet Press out. But the advertising firm is also a site of immense creativity. Mm -hmm. You know, we know Fosi Ganguly or Nada Munchi. Mm, yeah. That's the second point I thought I would play, that in, the fought, in this period, the two art of book design and the art of advertising and publicity are going parallel and both are reaching new heights, you know. Mm, mm. I think therefore positioning book cover design. Mm. The final point, and then I'll give it over to the audience. And you'll excuse me that I'm not going into the details of the book design. I think we can no, no, no. see. I don't want to make it in-house. No. The, the third, and I think it's an important point, I want to look back rather than look forward. Mm. To say that what is new about Signet Press in the 40s, it is certainly new. But if you think of the art of book, mm. the, the vocation of the book designer, right. the, the innovative publisher, we have Ramananda Chatterjee, oh, yeah, of course. we have Yure and Sons, right. Right. which is proceeding by, you know, this by several decades. Right. Right. So I think there is that longer history. Right. And the right. fact that you could become a cover designer, you could become a graphic artist, print technology, something the rays are laying out there, right? Mm -hmm. Color block printing. Mm -hmm. But I've written on other, you know, figures like uh, Priyo Gopal Das and all, who are all book designers and mm -hmm. they are self-trained wood engraving. Right. So, there is, so if anything, what is distinctive of Bengal's entry into this area of graphic art is the art of the book with the Bengal school gets a certain, you know, space. I think Ramananda Chatterjee and Yu Ray are pioneers. Signet Press is following in that line. Absolutely. So that lineage is also something to think about that mm -hmm. uh, when Signet Press is stepping in, it's not, mm -hmm. it's no. already a developed art space yeah. Yeah. and yeah. it is intervening within that. So these are the points which I found mm -hmm. really, really uh, your talk was absolutely fascinating. I mean, it's put out material for us to really think about and what would be its national equivalence is equally, you know, what is happening in other centers. If Bengal is indeed at the center of a new art of book design and of advertising in the 40s, very important cusp of end of empire, beginning mm. of new mm. nation, mm. you know, and in Ray's own career, it's between his career in advertising and his career as filmmaker, you have the signet years. It's a cusp in many ways. Mm -hmm. It's a new nation being born. It's a film, uh, a film director being born. But in between is all this work. So uh, I think uh, that question... You, you have made wonderful points. And it's just one or two things I just want to no. add. Because yes, no, and then we'll take questions. Yeah, very, very small point. I mean, wonderful points. I mean, first of all, uh, you know, of course, advertising is, I I personally regard it as very creative. But, you know, Ray himself sometimes was very, very, you know, bored of it. So the quotation was mostly from Ray. You know, I'm not getting so much to do or probably his zeal for innovation was not getting satisfied. That is something that is complaining here and there. And he was also telling, you know, the clients are, you know, you know, not understanding sometimes what I'm trying to convey. Was he done really? He's very comfortable with the very idea of commercial art, but sometimes, you know, the clients can be a bit more obstinate within quote. That is what Ray tells us. But honestly, I feel you are right. 
I think Ray Evan in advertisement is so creative, you know, and you know this, despite being in the system, and and he's actually precisely creative because he learned from advertising, I think, to somehow tailor made his design according to the demands of the exactly. question, and and that is there in Signet as well, and that is why you know. So I, the reason I'm drawing the parallels is precisely because you're saying he rejects a signature style. In yeah. advertising, you yeah. work for the client. You The product yeah. determines it. So the book here is determining the couple. So that's the parallel. Yeah. Both and, are, also, and so looking back is also very important, Tapati, uh, as you have mentioned, Dr. Ramananda Babu, but also you know, even Bisho Bharati, you know, before, you know, Bisho Bharati uh, uh, coming up with amazing books. So it's not as if, you know, uh, you know, Signet is radically different. You know, he's bringing out something. I mean, you know, I, I'm born in Hooghly. You know, a lot of things happened in Hooghly in terms of book cover design. As you all know, the, the Baptist Mission Press and, of course, this pioneering work in typography by you know, others, you know, including, you know, uh, other in Panchan and Karmukar and others and all that. But what I'm trying to say is that I personally think the kind of... And, I don't know because we don't have materials for everything, but I think the, the self the, the self conscious discussion, you know, uh, that DK is engaging, sure. you know, with his collaborators. No, no, that uh, makes it that is a salon. It's a salon, right? A salon. Where the writer comes, the artist comes, the publisher. So we all know that the Elgin Road. How oh, yeah. oh, became oh. a salon, and that is something important to think about. That you know, Nehru is coming down himself. Huh? Yes, yes. And also, and so looking at, you know, even the bookshops, you, there is one in Bonkim Chatterjee Street, which is in North Calcutta, the college street, the hub, but he also creates that new one in Raj Bihari, the Absolutely. second one, which is a different kind of audience. So he's almost mapping, you know, the audiences, you know, the bookshops are also like these meeting places. You know, meeting. the Raj Bihari one is next to Kobita Mahapod. So if you, you think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they live there. So Raj Bihari is a new kind of art literary space. Okay, right. now we'll go on to, can we take some of the questions now? It, I don't want this to become an in-house conversation. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because I really don't know. I mean, it was so specific. I don't know whether there are any questions. There are about nine questions in the chat box. Oh. You want me to read them, uh, Ushmita? Uh, uh, could you read them, uh, Tapati? Um, I yeah, have a very bad... <clears throat> yeah, I'm getting a cough, please. And, and last thing I want, just before the question, oh. one thing, one thing I just remember because, you know, the wave will get... You know, I think this collaboration also helped Ray when he was making films. Sure. So, yeah, so. Absolutely. Now, most of the comments are about fascinating analysis. Oh, no, no, no. Arita, <laughs> who's going to be joining us. Padmini Balaram also says, excellent presentation. Abhijit Prasenan says it. Let me come down to the questions. Yeah, one minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, Vishal Khandelwal, who will also be presenting later, says, thank you for the presentation. My question is about market research and consumer research feedback. How did Signet Breath get a sense of the market for these books that might have informed their design briefs? Since you're mm. looking so much at correspondence between publisher, writer, what kind of archival material are we getting? No, no we are not getting anything on market research. And that is where, you know, there is a lot of debate. You know, ultimately, you know, we know the disagreements that DK had with Ray, for example. We know from there. You know, we know the kind of interaction he has with authors because those are preserved. Those are preserved mostly from the family. And it's actually published here and there in little magazines across Calcutta. Sure. But the problem is, did he did, you know, do research or he was actually thinking about an audience? Mm. That he knew or he, he thinks he knows, you know? I mean, so sometimes you imagine an audience, you know, because you think that there is this room for a new kind of audience. But did he do a real market research? I doubt that. I really don't know because, you know, it's not as if DK was extremely successful later on after 1950s. In fact, uh, he had to, he was under huge debt and he has to sell off Signet. So, you know, uh, although he takes a lot of pride, you know, in the adverts and all this stuff, it of course, we can understand. So there is this, I know from letters of Shibram Chakraborty, for example, you know that, you know, Signet's Tukuro Khabur is something, Tukuro Katha is something very new. So he's mightily impressed. Or if you can know, uh, you know, some writers writing about the appreciation, you know, that Signet- Those endorsements that they're getting. Ah, but, but, but did he do a real market research? 
I am not too sure. I don't think even today. Nobody uh, does. <laughs> the Bengali book trade even today does market. I mean, even even the even the English book trade, and I, I have this feeling because I work in the industry uh, very much. Although there right. are sales and all that, but a lot of assumptions about sales are not about real data. You know, they are mostly about certain ideas that are there. And so, very small industry, you know. You know, it's like a cottage industry. Even today, you know, book industry is not a huge industry. So, I think you know, the real, you know, for example, say Netflix comes and they will do a market research before they do something, you know, because uh, they have this tendency to crunch data and you know, look at this idea called audience te- test if it is quantifiable. You know, I don't know that. But you know, book industry, even if there are one or two, three, maybe separate examples nationwide now, of course. I don't think you know they do a lot of market research uh, the way it should be done. I don't, of course, invest is done. DK probably didn't do it because there is no mention of a market research because DK was so so meticulous about mentioning anything you would do innovative for Signet Press. It I doesn't. Think, I don't think their their funding would have even allowed for market oh, yeah. survey. Yeah. You know, which an ad firm thing does. There's a question from Matthew Curian who says, beautiful, this is the origin of graphic design history in India. Where should Tijit Rai and Signet play an important role? I think the origin of graphic design history goes further back, but of course, a major intervention is made here. Can we do a parallel with Institute of Applied Arts in mm. School? Uh, let me see, where is it disappearing? Sorry. Digital uh, School, yeah. Yeah, okay. Let me just see. So, uh, why am I missing this? Okay. Um, Wait, let me see. Have I lost it? Shall I read it out? Yeah, can you? Can we okay, go? Yeah, by I par- can yeah, I can now see it. Which came around in 1857. Uh, wait, let me see. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Now, um, okay. yeah. Uh, it's a yeah. I, I get that question because it came around 1857 for the sake of commercial art and training. You know the key word is training, and you know, really, really I don't think he's training in commercial art, as I've already told you. You know, he's mostly Osi Ganguly again uh, is not trained as such in commercial art. In fact, in one of the interviews, he actually tells us that you know even Manik actually has a training in Shantini Ketan. He doesn't have a training like that, you know. I don't think anybody has this kind of training, you know. So I think the Boroda, uh, you know, sorry, the JJ school, of course, is slightly different because now, one thing that connects Calcutta with the JJ, and I briefly make an intervention here, is that yeah. there is a commercial art guild which is formed yes. in this time, mm-hmm. and there's the Journal of Art, there's the Indian Art and Industry. It's the first two platforms that's created to showcase the work of commercial art. Agree. And that's where the Applied Arts Institute in JJ and the Commercial Art Department in the Government School of Art Calcutta are actually speaking to each other. Mm-hmm. And it's in Commercial Art Guild, which unfortunately is called CAG. Now, CAG, CAG, yeah, CAG yeah, it's means. I think it's an archive in Bombay. There is an yeah. Archive. And, you know, they're actually carrying the names of individual artists so that, you know, we are getting to know of them. So I do think there is a very interesting connection between Bombay which is again a thriving center for the art of advertising and this. A question is from Nia Thanda. Yesterday, Ushab Chatterjee argued that design is always a team practice and champion the anonymity of designers. I'm interested to know whether you fully agree with this argument and what can be learned from such a further detailed study of Ray as an individual. That's, yeah, I think it's a big question because it's a very, very difficult question for me. It also says my understanding is that Ray is an individual archive. Now, this is a tension in your talk because you're talking about how Ray is resisting a signature style. Right. He there's teamwork, there's collaboration, and yet you're singling out this archive because it's available. And thinking then about the designer and running it through. So maybe you can address that. Yeah, yeah. One of the things, Taputiti, uh, uh, is that, of course, the very idea, you know, the Ray as an archive came, you know, mostly, you know, the kind of reputation he built, you know, as a filmmaker later on, you know. So if he never made films, for example, I doubt whether any kind of materials that we have access to have existed. So yes. a lot of things is a lot of, you know, kind of a, you know, which plays out around the cult and myth of Ray, you know, uh, in Bengal. and. 
in, in some parts of Bengal and mostly in Calcutta around that. So, you know, so a lot of things are dug up, you know, specifically it has got connections with rain. But, you know, I am actually also looking at, you know, things you know, at the way Ray would have been looked at during, say, 40s and 50s. I'm not looking at the reputation of Ray as he's building this huge, immense reputation, you know, after 1960s. And so, you know, whenever when he comes up with Chondesh, for example, his family magazine, you know, and he's actually editing it, and he's doing it with initially with Shubash Mukhopadhyay and then doing it with others like Leela Mojumdar and others. What he's trying to do is, there the art is definitely different. You know, you can easily understand that Ray is also almost burdened by the reputation in which he's stuck. So, you know, so that's a different, so, you know, Ray, to define Ray, uh, you know, as a designer, is very difficult, you know, because there is this pull, you know, amazing pull and this, this temptation on your part to make him a kind of a godlike individual, you know, compounded by those very, very complex quotes that he made that, you know, in, in, in film, there is only one God that is the director and all that, which I don't agree, frankly, and probably they never agreed initially. But sometimes, you know, when you, become, you get this reputation, you know, Ray's filmmaking is not about Ray, have Shubhrata Mitra, look at these people around him. They're like pioneers in their own ways. So, you know, a lot of things that we know as Ray today is probably due to the way Ray is defined in Bengali culture later. Yes. But so if you Ashok, look at it. Yeah. Ashok Chatterjee therefore actually says Ray's signature does not appear on his covers. Now, interestingly, a book cover designer's signature seldom appears. Now, sometimes it says come to but in the case, it didn't. So again, something to reflect on, that it is all retrospective, of course, that in a way, this archive and the profiling of Ray. Matthew Curian asked about whether this is a hugely potential exhibition here. I want to say that an exhibition has already been done, uh, but it maybe didn't travel nationally. There have been exhibitions of Shatujit Rai's book covers and printing even his cinema posters by a collector called Porimor Rai, his yes. stuff was displayed. But I do think it needs national exposure of a different kind. And is that is, museum? <laughs> it absolutely needs that. And therefore, I'm really glad to have brought both the archive and your wonderful presentation into this conversation we are having, which will be across different sites in India, different yeah. time periods, also very different time periods. But, uh, but of course, the 40s and 50s are very, very crucial. And, and that's one, one thing, Tapotiti, because you play you know, such a pioneering role in defining the 40s and, mm -hmm. for, for example, the very, the Bohos exhibition in Calcutta and the book that you edited, remember, uh, which is very, very important, you know, kind of watershed moment in the way, you know, design also emerges. But also, uh, Babu is actually right in certain ways, and I'll just tell you why. Because... Uh, uh, there is this bit of anonymity, although, you know, you can have this, you know, name of the designer in small letters somewhere tucked in between you know, and all that, you know, there is, Ray doesn't sign his drawings, frankly, as Otto that tells us, you know, only one was signed and that is his first cover. So the first cover was signed, that's it. No other covers were signed uh, initially. But, you know, uh, so there's this, I think, I, I think if you look at him as a designer, uh, you know, and, you know, I think there's also a break uh, that happens, you know. Uh, so 40s and 50s for Ray is one kind uh, of Ray as a designer and illustrator. I think after 70s, I think there's a different kind of uh, Ray emerging and, and, and there is a kind of a split in between. But sometimes it's so difficult to evaluate these things, you know. The individual archives are important, but, and as Ashok that told uh, last day wonderfully well, Individual incomes are important, but it's also important to understand the ecosystem, which makes these individuals, you know, tick. Because without the ecosystem, the individual simply doesn't exist. You know, so I personally find, because we we'll always talk about individuals, we have this temptation to talk about individuals. So Sarita actually mentions an important point. They said you can clearly see a style even while he explores a range of layouts and visual rhetoric. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, you know, some of what we were seeing to me spoke to his film posters very directly. Mm, like, so when he's going into designing his own posters, he uses similar fonts, 
minimalist styles and all. So in some ways, they're speaking across the different layers of the work because he designs his own posters. The brochure. Uh, yeah, Matthew Curian also says that he illustrated all, all the storyboards for his Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's a lot of them yeah. in the Shaito, <laughs> Kala, Nikita type. Yeah, I, I also okay. have... I just have a, you know, a kind of a, not a question, but also an observation. I mean, uh, tying in with this whole idea of uh, his uh, book cover designs and uh, what Papadidi mentions his later <clears throat> film posters. But also, uh, you know, uh, for instance, Kai Kai, the cover. It, it so reminds me of the Bhutir Nach, right? So, I mean, it, is there, is there... Yeah. Yes, the stacking and also, you know, these funny gestures, the, the humor and, and the movement in um, the stacking. <clears throat> so do you think that he also explored, uh, you know, in his later films, some of what he had explored in these, uh, you know, because uh, again... <clears throat> yeah, you're right, Ushmita. I mean, yeah. I, I think you're right. So for example, <coughs> Sorry, for a small me. example, even look at the title of his films. You know, look at something like Nayo. You know, that was dissociation of letters and this very Bauhaus ideas. And if you look at Albert, Albers, Joseph Albers, for example, and the way he's almost dissociating these blocks and all that. Uh, or if you look at the work of Saul Bass, which, you know, of course, who influences him a lot. You know, so, you know, this kind of play with words, this, because, you know, there was not much special effects during that time. So what you can do is to be, you know, be very intelligent. And I think a lot of things that he does in book covers. So his so film titles are like his book title pages. You in know, a so way. that's what I was finding really interesting in how he's carrying it into, yeah. you know, from advertising into book cover, into illustrations, which mm -hmm. he continues, but also into his storyboards and film layouts, credit yeah. lines, all of that, right? Apodidi, one thing I, I just wanted to tell you because you just, you know, give, give, give me a kind of a thought because look at Jai Baba Felunath, you know, The Elephant God, one of his films, very, very popular here. You know, initially he had this all planned out, you know, graffiti. He used to draw this, you know, graffiti and the, and the names would go with the graffiti. He really drew on the wall, okay? If this was the initial idea. But later on he discarded it because he got a, you know, kind of map of Kashi, which he found from a, uh, from a street corner. It's almost like the mind of an advertiser, you know, walking because he thought of, you know, this found map and he discarded this amazing wall paintings, graffiti that he did, you know, nobody would have done it. And he just put in the map and the titling is coming up in a very, very radically different way. So, you know, this found materials which he uses, you are right. It's absolutely the mind of a book designer and uh, advertiser at play. And is there in the brochure designs? If you look at his brochure designs, he used to do his brochure designs, right? He used to do his, you know, <laughs> you know everything in the films, you know, a lot of things he used to do. And, you know, there I think the advertiser came. So look at this brochure design, say for Charulata. So he used to do three Absolutely. designs. Absolutely. You know, one is for the international market, one is for the local market, another for others. You know, even there is almost distinguishing the audience, you know, there is actually, Creating again the you know, horses for the courses kind of idea. Look, so, <laughs> you're so you're educating the viewer, the reader, and the film goer, right? So you know <laughs> all three. So this pedagogy of taste, if I can call it, is so crucial, right. uh, and it's it's one of the work, a very important service. To go back to what Professor Chatterjee said, design a service. The right. service here is a form of education, even right. though the designer may not come out of that education. Right. The work of that training of taste is very important. Yeah, Ushmita had a point. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, not a point, then again, a query. Um, going back to his the first, one of the you know, beginning of your presentation, Pagla Dashu, a cover 1940 yeah. and Pagladashu cover 1946. Uh, you know, what you remarked was that in 1940, it's almost a meta, <clears throat> you know, narrative, uh, you know, a kind of a, a kind of a play because it, uh, you know, uh, the character is winking at the audience. But in the other one, uh, you said it's the, the kind of the humor or the fun has been lost. But for me, when I'm looking at it visually, and correct me, I may be completely off mark here. But I felt that, you know, the by 46, his approach is almost cinematic and it's it's quite like his storyboards, right? Like his, um, uh, like Chandir Pahar Jita, you know, like this, that, that silhouette or the, uh, you know, details and I mean, that, that kind of, um, 
uh, language has developed and uh, perhaps is he, he got, thinking he got more sophisticated maybe yeah but is he also thinking cinematically by then or yes, is you know, that something uh, i'm not too sure because mm. um, initially he was not too you know into he was of course part of the cinema movement as you all know you know the the cine club movement and all this initially you know 1957 and you know before that he had this you know admiration for films mostly westerns right but um, he writes about this essay called what is wrong with indian films you know that is one of his first essays that he wrote and there are more archival materials that are coming up which are not published and he is writing about what is wrong with indian cinema you know i cannot see this and all this but you know he was not thinking cinematically you know initially you know that is you know at, at least that is what i could make out it is only i think after 57 when he meets you know it's a chidananda dash you know you know more in people who are much more into cinema that is almost as a bongshi chandra gupta and and his and his you know and his and his and his presence in the river by renoir remember he was an observer there that is where you know he's coming up with this different kind of visual medium which can be more exciting you know than what he does for a cover design or say, at least what he thinks you know does for a cover design or and it's much more collaborative it's much more collaborative it's very interesting to know the thing although he makes this weird remark and i don't know why he but makes him make this remark it's mostly caught quoted out of context probably that in the director is the god but he's so collaborative in the way he does his work you know uh, so it's not as if you know it is he he is of course doing a lot of things but by no means uh, he is the only one you know there are many auteurs at play and uh, so this idea of collaboration is at the heart of ray's enterprise so which we don't like to say because he's such a cult right <laughs> so we, we i'll be killed for saying that that he's not a genius or like that i don't like to think like that because you know he's also you know growing up and as topodidi rightly said that it is not as if signet is doing something absolutely radical no you know there are a lot of things that has gone before ray knew of, of it so look at one thing yuri and sons published oriental art mm-hmm. and that you know two volumes at least i know and and they're sumptuously produced right so it's not as if you know they may have seen them or may not have that says yura is a pioneer of a of a yeah, but state. even before that you know there are a lot of things actually yeah. in the flea market of kolkata because even the flea market remember the gis are coming and a lot of materials from outside are also happening you know in 40s and all so it's as if you know Cal- calcutta is always rich in this plurality of you know what we call you know magazines and all this broad streets and everything so you know i think it was a very good place to create that sense of you know multiplicity of vision uh, so you can think in a lot of visual terms uh, you can think because calcutta is also chaos and i think this idea of to revel in chaos and not to resolve any chaos and to be plural it to be to think in as many directions as you can without sticking to a kind of a policy that you have to think in a certain way is something that is there so i think cinema so professor chatterji makes a very interesting reference yesterday to how his years in metal box when he worked with filmmakers <clears throat> like horisha dhandash gupta right try so it's a confluence so calcutta of the 40s 50s 60s with the advertising and the commercial firms there creative people is a very important confluence just as ahmedabad would be one bombay to be another bombay. you know so it's worth thinking about that time i love i really like to think of it as a very very important period in the cities and bengal's history which is overshadowed by art history the art history never really addresses this i will end with the last question because i think it's a very important question that padmini balaram poses which is a comparison between the designs you showed of signet press and present day cover page graphics the reason it's important is because you're a practicing designer and yesterday professor chatterjee talked about creating histories which are usable for practice for teaching so what is the lesson you would draw or how does you think that has influenced present day cover graphics at all um i don't i mean one of the problems with present day you know graphic design of course is you know most of the cover designers you know don't read the manuscripts and uh, sometimes we are given a kind of a design brief and everything and all that 
but you know sometimes it becomes so mechanically produced you know because we are contracted mostly and we have to do say four or five covers a month sometimes if you are a contracted freelancer or a proper designer in a publishing house so i personally would love to look at signet's uh, you know uh, understanding of the book i think uh, as a key thing you know for any cover designer to learn from you know it is what every designer every illustrator in signet does is almost engage with the contents of the book because ultimately you are almost um, giving a cover you know that of course the book uh, remember a book is mutilated if it does it doesn't have a cover so you can understand cover is so important because if it is not there it is mutilated but it's also important to understand that the cover is also reflected on what is there inside so i think signets almost meditation uh, on the written word you know the designer's meditation and you can easily see that from the negotiations that the designers make yes they are part of a system but they also read they are very avid readers look at ray look at osi ganguly they are all avid readers and uh, even makhan dot makhan dot all of them I mean, bk of course is very very avid reader and so you can easily understand that you know that kind of old fashioned pouring engagement you know kind of th- to the book is something that we can learn Uh, of course today of course things are different because you have computer technology very different but remember technologies will always be different in different ages so that cannot be a ruse not to read because ultimately a book you need to interpret what you are doing so what we do today is sometimes we very surface we just catch a mat- metaphor here and there we just do a cursory summary reading we don't engage too much sometimes with authors there's a plethora of editors negotiating uh, in between so i'd rather go back to the original manuscript look at engage with it and then come up with a design i think that's something that signet does and signet does so well and look at the way uh, the cover design and the book itself become a, a kind of a text in itself look at the way the contrary and plays out you know ideas plays out from the title and the covers you know that becomes a text in itself that almost negotiates the real texts in a completely different way almost critiques sometimes so i think that kind of engagement serious engagement with book makes it much much easier. so uh topic uh, didi have we have one question on facebook uh, so i would like to ask pina ki um shonko banerji writes um shonko is a wonderful designer Yes. Uh great to hear from all three of you. I would love to hear from Pinaki if you tell something about the open platform of design in the digi- in this digital age. Oh, uh, uh <laughs> you know I'm I'm probably not the right person sometimes to answer this because I work in a very closed, you know, uh, I'm a freelancer. Yes, but I also work in a very closed publishing world, right? I'm a, I I I work in a kind of a circuit which is extremely closed. but i i think this digital design of course you know it's something of a new challenge and you you need to rise up to the challenge and you cannot just say that i'll go back to the earlier ages when the blocks and all these things were there i'm not talking of going back to that you cannot do that you cannot retrace your path at, as far as production is concerned today because today the way we lay out a book we compose a book we create a book the timelines the economics of it all has changed you know everything has changed but what i would actually advise you know a lot of digital you know open platforms you know that are coming up is that sometimes you know they are they are not creating the kind of value you know that you should do you know i mean i think one of the reasons it's not about the medium Yeah. you know i i i think it's only because and, and it's expected because the medium is more democratic and so there is of course much better even play but sometimes i think a, a bit of rigor you know helps and this is something and i'm not a you know, kind of a winding person but this is sometimes that is lacking in the open platform so i would actually i'm as a designer you know what i do is 
I still do my first doodle on paper. Uh, one of the reasons I do it, because I'll do it in the computer, but the first doodle, just like Ray used to do his doodles on paper first, right? And of course, he used to then think about the color coordinations, the plot things and all everything. But I would actually do it on the paper because sometimes, you know, uh, unless you meditate a bit on a thought process for a certain period of time, the digital sometimes, you know, provides a very easy way out, which actually you know, desist you from engaging deeply with the material at hand. So, you know, that's the only thing. But I, I think if you can overcome that, I think even this medium can be a wonderful kind of platform to work with because a lot of people are doing fantastically well with digital medium. And I'm looking at, say, pub, you know, foreign book designers, you know, amazing book designers like Malika Favre or somebody like Chip Kid, who is actually using the design you know, the, 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 the new platform to their own end and almost, you know, subverting them in a certain way, you know. So that kind of richness, that kind of what I call uh, symbolic richness is something that we need to extract from the medium itself. Because if we don't do that, you know, we will just be, you know, putting up things without much thought and that will completely destroy the, the very, what I call the trigger, the very inspiration behind the creation of a book or a cook cover or whatever. I'm sorry, I mean, I don't know whether I answered this. Um, okay. Uh, yes. Ashok Chatterjee writes, Ray understood that each cover is an advertisement for the conference. <laughs> Uh, I think we have to round up the session. Yeah. Yes. Two hours. Yes. Uh, really like to thank each and every person who's been with us through this fascinating presentation and discussion right till the end. I'd like to tell everybody that uh, Matthew Turian asked for your publication. Yes, yes, I'm working on it. <laughs> Please send him that. I'd also like to say that a good blending of commerce and art here. Yeah, uh, Pinaki's been designing the Starmark calendars for some years, and this year's 2022 calendar is on the nice book covers. So a lot of what we saw there is there on the Starmark calendar. I highly recommend it for everybody oh, to Thank you so much. It's like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for okay. advertising your calendar. Now, maybe Ushmita, uh, you yeah. want to make an announcement of the next? Uh, yes. Uh, so, yeah. So, thank you, Pinaki. That was riveting. And, uh, you know, I really look forward to uh, engaging more with the material that you have shared. And, of course, Tapati B were making such wonderful remarks and uh, connections. Um, so, uh, to everybody who's here, uh, of course, the next part of the series uh, is from 19th Feb. So, 19th February, I will be making a presentation. And those who are in Kolkata, uh, it will be an on-site presentation at Imami Art, but it will also be telecast live for people catching it from elsewhere. Uh, I am working, I have worked on, and this is the second iteration of the Ritein Mojumdar exhibition. And uh, this is in collaboration with uh, Chatterjee and Lal. And the show exhibition starts on the 12th of February. So who, those of who you are here in Kolkata, please do visit. And on 19th, I will give a walkthrough and a presentation uh, at the gallery, which will also be telecast live. Uh, after that, we have Sarita Sundar on 26th February and Professor Rebecca Brown on 27th February. And uh, after which we go into the March uh, series. So I think it will be wonderful to continue with the conversations and I think a lot of new material, uh, you know, food for thought coming up here. I think in the next sessions, uh, Sarita will be talking about her research uh, uh, and also Re Professor Rebecca Brown will revisit the festivals of India. Uh, so I, with... Um, Thanks to both of you. Uh, I thank all the audience members for being here. Please do register for all the other sessions. And if you are in Kolkata, please drop in after the on the 12th and after for the exhibition on Ritein Majumdar. It's called Imprint. And uh, yeah. 
Thank you so much, thank everybody. You, thank you, Ushmita, and also thank you. Yes, Pinaki, you were saying something? Yes, thank you, Ushmita, and thank you, Dapatiti, because she's the one who actually. I'm sorry. Made... I'm sorry. Can I? Can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. Thank you, Ushmita, but thank you, Dapatiti, because just a hint, no? she's the one, and her work is the one that actually made me to explore this area. This is a kind of an honest confession, and also a great thing to her for you know, making a lot of things. Life for this us. has been a very important contribution to this conversation. So thank you very much. And uh, we will meet again uh, on this platform in a Zoom session, I think, for Sarita. Yes. For Pushmita, we will meet in a more hybrid mode where some of us will be present and others will be attending it. But we look forward to this continuing conversation. And thank you very much, Pinaki, Pushmita, Imam, especially to the audience for staying with us. And Matthew Gurian wants to take you out to Pune immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. I, yeah, I know this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. So we are Thank you. Now. Have a very good evening. Thank you. Thank you.